Hi, I'm Keith. And I'm Mike. And we're Atlas Genius, and you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I'd like to welcome you to our interview with Atlas Genius. How are you both doing? Good, how are you doing? I'm awesome. It's been a while since we last spoke. I think it was two years it's ago. It is about two years. It was a lot colder as well, I yes. think. Yes. Yeah. I remember we did on your tour of us, and since you stepped outside, it was freezing. So Correct. it's very nice to be on this beautiful day here in Toronto. Thank you for having us here on this day. We actually yeah, planned it around the weather. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. So you released your new record, Inanimate Objects, earlier this summer. So just yeah. to get acquainted a little bit with our viewers, could you just tell us just a brief little summary about the record and just what you'd like everyone to know about it? Yeah, well actually it was probably only three weeks ago that it came out. Yeah. The first single was probably the beginning of summer, but um, the album was, like I said, maybe the beginning of, it was August 20, 28th. 28th. Uh, and we took about a year off of touring when we, uh, after touring for th uh, almost a year and a half, we took a year off to do the album. And um, actually, we initially we thought we'd take three months off. <laughs> <laughs> and we thought well, that's how long it would take, uh, but it took us a year. Um, and we did most of it in Los Angeles. And uh, I guess as sonically, it's, it's a little darker than, the, than the, the first album. Lyrically, it's a little darker. Uh, all round, I'd say it's it's a little darker. I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to bring up the fact that it is, as a whole, a lot darker than the debut. Was that just uh, attributed to you wanting to change things up, or were you listening to darker albums at that time? Yeah, I guess it's a bit of a lot of different things. Like, I mean, we toured a lot on the first album, and we felt that we wanted to cover some darker sonic ground. When you're playing live, there's this tendency to, to want to make things feel a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more uh, to you know rock things up a little. And the first album was kind of a little bit more mellow, I think, uh, uh, sonically, and, and, and there's a bit more of a, a sameness to the first album. Whereas this one, we wanted there to be more dynamics. You know, have, where, where, if it was going to be small, we wanted it to be tiny, and it was going to be big, we really wanted to push it. And, and uh, we did that with a lot more guitar uh, and some and some edgier synth sounds uh, than we chose for the first one. Yeah. And I read how you wanted to actually be semi-autobiographical and when you listen to it you can kind of get that sense that you're it's private, you're not letting out too much, there's still some mystery. Yeah. But I just wanted to mention that and I was wondering for yourselves, is it hard to kind of put yourselves out there knowing that thousands if not millions of people are going to be listening to this, relating to it? It's not that, it's not the millions that you worry about, it's the two people that you wrote about. It's, 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 it's worrying that they are going to hear something and either be, no, offe about them or be offended or sometimes, yeah, know that it's about them. Um, okay. Well, yeah, I guess it's not, yeah, I mean, if they're listening to this, then they will know that it's about them. Um, that's, that's, the, that's the scariest part, you know, it's not that, you know, I could talk to, it's like if you were talking about your breakup with anybody else, it doesn't matter, it's if you're talking to that person, it's much more, um, uh, much more difficult. Mm -hmm. I wanted to bring up the fact I know it was recorded between Australia and California. Uh, when you were in California on your downtime, did you have any time to kind of just indulge in that whole culture, the atmosphere? What were you up to? Yeah, um, well, I did probably, I mean, I, I go out more than Michael does. Mike's yeah. a homebody. I um, enjoyed going to Veggie Grill. I saw a lot of that and <laughs> I saw the uh, insides of Whole Foods a lot. So for those of you who don't know, so Veggie Grill is a West Coast institution for vegans. It's like, it's kind of like, it's uh, it's like McDonald's f for vegans. Okay. Kind of. And so um, that's what we kind of live on when we're over there. But and, and actually, so we started the album in Australia, maybe three or four months in Australia, and then we moved to LA. And it was actually one of the biggest things is the distraction of just wanting to go out because the nightlife in LA is great. We have a bunch of friends there. There's always this. Oh, there's a, there's a show tonight. There's a there's a bar, and so we were, we, you know, it was that it was hard to kind of. I had to get that out of my system before I could yeah, really focus. Yeah, not be distracted. And then to focus back on the album, you know. So there's a few months of that. And you're taking the record now across North America. You have the show in Toronto tomorrow. We're really stoked for that. So how have the shows been treating you? Been great. What's it's, it's what you know? What's really nice is having two albums. To, to create a set from because when you have one album like we did on, la on the last tour when we mm -hmm. met you um, you can't not play a song everything has to, <laughs> everything has to be played whereas now you can make a set that you can, you can structure a nice little journey yeah, of a set it's a better structure yeah. 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 yeah do you find it difficult choosing set lists how do you kind of form that together now that you have more songs um, 
it's starting to feel like it's settling in nicely. We, we tried a bunch of different set lists and sometimes it's even just as, just flipping two songs around can change the difference. It can make the difference between a really good set and a set that doesn't feel quite right. So um, but we've had the benefit of playing for the last three months and, and we're working that out. And now I feel like it's, it's feeling like it's where it should be. And I know we've been following one another on Instagram and I absolutely love seeing all of the tour updates. It's so <laughs> great seeing how awesome things have been. I know you played Kimmel, you played tons of festivals over the summer. So for yourselves, what have been some of the touring highlights? We did it, um, you know what, we, by, by uh, just by sort of luck, we ended up headlining this show effectively in Detroit where oh. it was a festival called Mopop in Detroit. And uh, we were sort of late in the afternoon, but it got rained out. So just as we finished playing, we had an incredible set. The crowd was amazing. And a minute after we walked off, this downpour came, like a torrential <laughs> downpour. And uh, Brandon Flowers was supposed to be straight after us. And he ended up going on three hours later. So, uh, and, and, and most of the people <laughs> were getting attacked. And most of the most of the people had gone, unfortunately. So we were very lucky that we played sort of the yeah, you're kind yeah. of the, headline, the busiest part the of the festival. So that was that festival was great. The crowd was amazing. Yeah. Amazing crowd. Awesome. Um, what, what else was great? Playing Kimmel again was fun. It was good to be back. It was nice yeah. to do it. You know, we're veterans of Kimmel. We've done it twice now. <laughs> so that was fun. You still get nerves being on live television? Yes, but not as much as the first the, time. Was I mean, the first few yeah. times you do. I mean, you can imagine like it's. Of course. And it's not like doing a, a normal show where you have ten songs and if you screw up one once, it's one of ten. It's you have one song. And so everyone's watching. You have to be you have to be on and it's not as yeah, we've since now that we've done a bunch of them it's it's not quite as intimidating. But it's a very artificial it's an artificial stage, you know. And you're delivering your songs around North America to tons of fans. So just as fans to of tens. music, yes. to tons, tens. Oh. not tens, <laughs> to tens, <laughs> ten fans per show, guys. Yeah. No, to tons of fans. Uh, so for yourselves, just being music lovers, what was your favorite show when you were younger? What was yours? Favorite show? Yeah. I remember seeing Death Cab for Cutie in a tiny, almost bar in Adelaide. Was it was about. That? Was that the Governor Hamash? Oh yeah. On the on when Plans just came out, and it was just like. 400 people in this tiny room and just right in, in the band's face and it was just a pretty surreal moment to see you know such an amazing band like that in such an intimate environment yeah that was a highlight it's funny because it's a good point because i forget about that as a as a fan those small shows are kind of extra special yeah but as a band you tend to think like the, the bigger the show the better it is you know because from your point of view the energy of having a thousand people or ten thousand people yeah to play to is is somehow better but you're right like that is a good point that the intimate shows when you when you when you're playing to a few hundred people and they can actually see exactly what you're doing um, it's probably more rewarding nice. well, since last I, I just had an epiphany <laughs> well since last speaking with you it's been great to actually see your fan base grow and follow this journey with you so just to wrap things up for your fans who are going to be viewing our interview is there anything you'd like to throw out to them or say to them all that was our bus ticket here. Yeah, first of all, we <laughs> apologise. <laughs> Perfectly timed. Uh, so, I mean, well, we have a new album out. So that's the, the exciting thing. We went away for a year and a bit. And it's so nice to have this album out because we, we poured so much into it. And it was a, it was a very... Uh, it, it's a journey. Like, making an album is not always an easy process. You know, yeah. there's a lot that goes into it. And somebody once said to me... Um, that if you're making a good album, a little piece of you dies every time you make an album. And I think that's probably true because you go through moments, you board, it's borderline insanity, if not insanity, because you're, you know, you're hearing a track back hundreds of times, working out what needs to change, what's right. And when you finally finish it, it's, it's, a, it's a, almost a, it's a spiritual thing. You put it out into the world. And, and I, unlike a lot of things where, you know, maybe if you do a painting, it might take you an hour. This album took a long time, and yeah. it's, it's great to have it out there. So I urge people to, to check out the new album. Awesome. Well, I just want to say congrats on the release of this record and all thank the you. best with everything that's to come. I know we'll be at the show tomorrow night. See you then. So, yeah, and just thank you so much. Yeah, thank it's you. great catching up with you. Thank you very much. And remember, everyone, you can visit us at inmusicblogger.com for all sorts of interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite bands. We'll see you next time. See you later.